Further east now to Burnsville, where they're staging their annual picnic races. The two teams report. The environment in Queensland's far west is as harsh as Australia gets, with temperatures that can soar into the mid-50s. There's enough flies and dust out here to send you temporarily blind, and it can sometimes go for days without seeing another living soul. So when you catch that first whiff of beer and meat pies on the breeze, you run. Taking that first step into Birdsville, it was easy to imagine what the early travellers would have felt after spending months slogging it out in the desert. And like travellers have done for over a century, we went straight to the historic Birdsville Hotel for a well-earned drink. Birdsville truly is the back of beyond. It's so far off the beaten track that many travellers have made it their life ambition just to get here, and rightly so. You can visit no other town in Australia except for this one right here and still say that you've witnessed the true Aussie outback. Located just 12 kilometres from the South Australian border, Birdsville sits in Queensland's further southwest corner, a dry and inhospitable place with scenery that typifies the Australian outback. It is this wild environment and the town's sheer isolation that gives Birdsville its romanticised image as one of those places you just have to experience, if only once in a lifetime. After our mammoth hike through the desert, there was one thing on our mind, food. And we had heard that the local bakery serves up some pretty interesting treats. Out in the desert, you really need to make do with what you've got. And here in Birdsville, they take it to the extreme. Check out what we found in the local bakery. What have we got, Dusty? Mate, the whole range of pies, but I recommend the curry and camel. Comes in that box there, it's that close to people. Curry camel pie, now this is, I've never tried one before in my life. Only here at the Burzel Bakery can we give it a go, so. Mate, slip into one. If you don't like it after the first pie, bring it back and I'll give you three of anything else. Looks good. Curried camel pie, this is amazing. Mm. Delicious. Really tastes like camel. <laughs> More like, just like meat, any sort of meat, really. <laughs> that is beautiful. A ringer from across the road brought in some camel steaks for me to try a couple of years ago, and they're really bloody nice. I think the reason that he brought them in was so that I'd buy a camel from him. He suggested we do camel pies. The next morning, I asked him what he was going to do with the camel. He said he would, uh, and this is fair dinkum. He said he'd go out and shoot it and chop it up with an axe and bring it back in. And I said, you're going to cover up? And he said, I'll throw some leaves on it if you want. Anyway, curry camel had a ring and it's really nice meat. I defy anyone to tell a difference between it and beef in colour, texture or taste. That's how close to meat it which was very surprising. And it was just something different. I'd never seen it done before and it makes a really nice bloody pie. Mmm. Bloody good. I got curried camel. Really? Yeah. I got kangaroo. Yum. Once watered and fed, we soon realised that we weren't the only ones who had made the trek out to Birdsville. People do it in a variety of ways. One passionate group of travellers, which we found camp nearby, choose to take to the air. Lots of different modes of transport to get here, and uh, in the aviation industry, we couldn't work out why anybody would want to drive here. It's fast and it's easy and it's so much fun. The, the scenery on the way up here is just fantastic. There's, uh, there's twin engine, there's, there's ultralight, there's GA aircraft, there's too many to, to mention. A lot of Cessna, Piper Cherokee, helicopters, the, the, the list goes on. The only way to travel, you go from where you are to where you want to be. It's a lot quicker. It's, it's more expensive, but yeah, if you come from Melbourne, it's quick. But it's like under the wing, it's, yeah, it's good fun. You can see around here that most people camp under the wing of their tent. For one, it's convenient, it's easy, it's quiet, and uh, just a great way to get around. Well, I travel to Birdsville in this. My tech name, it's my baby. My wife calls it my sixth daughter, and I suppose that's right. While walking around the airstrip, we saw some great looking planes. However, nothing could beat what we came across next. Just check out this homemade flying machine. What is this? This is 
nav equipment here. It's a plywood router. Unfortunately, we couldn't find the pilot who owns this machine. However, we were pretty sure he was at the pub. And rightly so. I would too if I managed to, yes, fly this thing and land it safely. It's bad. It's bad. However, for most people, driving is their primary mode of transport, and for four-wheel drive fanatics, the Birdsville region is perfect. Sitting at the edge of the Simpson Desert, one well-known obstacle you're likely to come across is Big Red. And to conquer this massive sand dune has become almost a rite of passage for many a traveller to the region. Birdsville itself lies on the edge of the Simpson Desert, a vast and desolate environment of sand dunes and scorched earth. There's over 1,100 sand dunes in the Simpson, which run north to south over hundreds of kilometres. This one here is the first and the highest of them all, rising 36.5 metres or 120 feet above sea level. It's been aptly named Big Red. At sunset, it's a perfect time to be up the top of Big Red as a kaleidoscope of outback colours forms right before your eyes. The 360 degree views of pure desert is nothing short of breathtaking. However, there was one particular reason why we made this trek out to Birdsville. Once a year, this tiny town lights up for a sporting event with a difference, the legendary Birdsville races. So tune in next week as we bring you this amazing event and all the crazy festivities that go with it.